from with niggas, pull your car and argue all day about who's the best MCs, Biggie, Jay-Z, and you know. Nas. How did the Jay-Z B start? <laughs> How did it all start? Who really won the feud between Nas and Jay-Z? Who emerged as the better artist? In the annals of hip-hop history, there have been countless rivalries, battles, and disputes. Yet few have been as seismic or as enduring as the feud between Nas and Jay-Z. These two behemoths of the hip-hop world, both hailing from the bustling boroughs of New York City, have left an indelible mark on the music industry and beyond. Nas, a street poet from the gritty Queensbridge projects, burst onto the scene with his debut album, Illmatic. With its intricate lyricism and raw storytelling, it was hailed as an instant classic, raising the bar for what hip-hop could be. Meanwhile, Jay-Z, hailing from Brooklyn's Marcy Projects, brought a businessman's acumen to the game. He co-founded Rockefeller Records and released Reasonable Doubt, a seminal album that blended street wisdom with entrepreneurial ambition. Yet beneath the surface of these towering achievements, a rivalry was brewing. Their feud, laced with lyrical jabs and public altercations, shook the hip-hop world to its core. It wasn't just about who was the better rapper, it was about contrasting visions of what hip-hop could be, and what it meant to be successful in an industry often fraught with adversity. The controversy surrounding their rivalry is as intriguing as it is complex. It's a saga that has captivated fans for years, sparking endless debates and discussions. Who was right? Who was wrong? Who came out on top? It's a narrative that extends beyond the music speaking to larger themes of power, identity and ambition. But we're just scratching the surface here. There's so much more to unpack, so many layers to peel back. We haven't even begun to dive into the specifics of their feud, the lyrical battles, the personal slights, the high-stakes drama. Stay tuned as we delve into the depths of one of hip-hop's most notorious rivalries. Before the feud, there were two rising stars, Nas and Jay-Z, two names that would soon become synonymous with hip-hop greatness. But let's dial it back a bit, back to the days when they were simply Nasser Jones and Sean Carter, two young men with a dream and a mic. Nas, hailing from the Queensbridge houses in Queens, New York, had a gritty, streetwise style that resonated with the realities of urban life. His debut album, Illmatic, dropped in 1994, and it was nothing short of a revelation. It was raw, it was real, and it was a startling reflection of the hardships and triumphs of life in the city. Critics hailed it as a masterpiece, and Nas was quickly recognized as a formidable talent in the hip-hop world. On the other side of the city, in Brooklyn's Marcy houses, Jay-Z was carving out his own path to stardom. His flow was smooth, his lyrics were sharp, and his entrepreneurial spirit was evident even in those early days. His debut album, Reasonable Doubt, released in 1996, was a critical success, showcasing Jay-Z's knack for storytelling and his keen business acumen. He was a hustler in every sense of the word, turning his experiences into rhymes that spoke to the aspirations of many. Despite their different backgrounds and styles, both Nas and Jay-Z had a lot in common. They were both products of New York's rough neighborhoods, they both had a unique way of articulating their experiences through their music, and they were both ambitious, eager to make their mark in the industry. Yet their paths to success weren't identical. Nas was seen as the poet, the philosopher, using his lyrics to paint vivid pictures of urban life. Jay-Z, on the other hand, was the consummate businessman, leveraging his talent to build an empire that extended far beyond music. But as they say, all's fair in love and war, and the war was about to begin. But the artistic battle traces back to Rockefeller artist Memphis Bleak's debut album. On his first album, Coming of Age, Jay's protege Memphis Bleak released a song featuring a verse from Jigga. Jay put his, uh, a verse on one of my records, on my album, What You Think Of That? What you think of that? And the hooks blatantly say, I'm a ball till I fall, what you think of that? I'm a ball till I fall, what you think of that? Now that track, for some reason, struck a chord with Nas prompting the Queen's Bridge MC to cite Bleak's lyrics in his own song. You want to ball till you fall, I can help you with that. You want beef, I can let it fucking melt in your hat. By blatantly referencing Bleak's line in his response, it appeared that Nas was challenging him. A lot of times rappers listen to other rappers' lyrics and, and they feel like 
people coming at them. They're very sensitive and they feel like sometimes rappers are coming at them indirectly. And rather than a face-to-face -face confrontation, MCs generally take it straight to the mic. And so, Bleak responded on his single, My Mind Right. I don't got no personal feeling against the man. Like, he cool, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't got nothing against him, but you throw a line at me, be prepared, I'ma throw one at you. Your lifestyle's written, so who you supposed to be? Play your position. And on one of the key lines on that record, he said, your lifestyle's written, well, who you supposed to be? Play your position. And of course, you know, everyone knows now the second album was called It Was Written. So people took that as a diss. Now, by referencing this album title, Bleak let the world know that he was talking about Nas and questioning his credibility. I started that drama, so what you mean how I feel about it? I felt like I got my big homie in some shit. It's going down now here in these New York streets. 2001, and the hip hop world was about to be set ablaze. As the new millennium dawned, the hip hop scene was brimming with talent, but two names stood out from the rest, Nas and Jay-Z. And this is what people love about hip hop. It's the bravado fuel tradition of MCs battling it out with words. It's been a part of the tradition of hip hop since day one. And it's what helps sets rap apart from other forms of music. Like the war of words between two of the city's biggest music stars. The king of Brooklyn's Marcy Projects, Jay-Z, versus the poet of Queensbridge, Nas. Now it's a battle that's the latest in the tried and true tradition of hip hop. And as you're about to see, as competition often does, it brought out the best lyrically between Nas and Jay-Z. It's a ill lyrically war right now. I think Jay on top right now. i like to hear some more. Eat the joint. He, could, he straight killed Jay-Z on that one. Hold up. Just how did this legendary battle erupt? The fuse was lit at New York's radio station Hot 97's 2001 Summer Jam. The long festering rivalry between Jay-Z's Rockefeller camp and QB's finest blew up on stage when Jay debuted The Takeover. Both hailed from New York, both possessed undeniable talent, but it was their rivalry that would soon eclipse their individual successes. The first sparks of the feud ignited when Jay-Z dropped Takeover at the annual Summer Jam concert. The track, a fiery diss aimed at Nas and Prodigy of Mob Deep, sent shockwaves through the hip-hop community. So yeah, I sampled your voice, you was using it wrong. You made it a hot line, I made it a hot song. He starts doing the, the Takeover. No one knew what that song was, all right? He does the first verse, the Takeover. You hear the background, the little Jim Morrison Doors sample. Come on! Everyone's like, okay, but they're listening to him. I don't care if you mob deep, I hope you cruise. You little I got money stacks bigger than you. He had the verse that this prodigy. So he said that verse and tried to clown him and the crowd loved it. But then at the end of the line, he goes, ask Nas, he don't want it with ho. Ask Nas, he don't want it with ho. No. The crowd went crazy, like, whoa, wait a minute. Oh, it's like, okay, now it's on. At that point, Jay-Z's finally acknowledged that he doesn't like Nas, but there's a conflict with Nas, and he said it. Nah, I, I wasn't surprised by Jay at the Summer Jam. He knew that this is a point in his life where he can make himself official. That was a big step for hip hop, no matter who he dissed or whatever. And and, and that's and that's good. Good, but not over. Boom. About three weeks later, Nas drops a beautiful freestyle called Stillmatic. With the release of Stillmatic on mixtapes, Nas took his argument back to the streets. H to the Izzo, M to the Izzo, push Izzo, you phony, the rapper version of Cisco. When Jay did the Summer Jam, you know, you know, everybody's in the streets is like, yo, I know you're gonna get at him, so I, I got at him with the freestyle joint. Your fake rhymes and no times that never took place, you liar. Un was your first court case. You had no prize. I'm sorry, it, it was that small, but he touched the nerve. Although it was a stinging track, Stillmatic failed to create a buzz. When Takeover was released on Jay's Blueprint album, his new verse responded to Stillmatic and made the opening blow at Summer Jam seem like a tap. Had a spark when you started, but now you just garbage. You fell from top 10 to not mention at all. He comes at Nas hard from all angles. He comes at it from the perspective of like, from a fan, kind of like, you know, like, your last album was, hmm, oh man. He broke it down, how Nas fell off. If I was to get at somebody on that level, I gotta make sure I come with my best. I'm not being lazy with it. I'm not playing around with it. I'm gonna really, see, I'm gonna do my research and I'm gonna come back with something real serious. You know what I'm saying? And it's gonna be hot. I'm sorry, but anyone that heard that knew that it was like, oh, that's it, it's a rap. Nas is out of here. In the very beginning, 
When I heard Takeover, I personally didn't think Nas could come back. Jay-Z's lyrical prowess and audacious bravado were on full display as he called out his rivals, claiming the throne of New York's hip-hop scene. But Nas was not one to back down. In response to Takeover, he dropped Ether, a scathing track that took aim at Jay-Z's authenticity and questioned his claim to the crown. But Nas was far from KO. To a fan, a phony, a fake, a f you stand, I still whip your ass. And I knew that eventually people want to hear what I got to say. Were you abused as a child, scared to smile, they called you ugly? Dressing it right so I could let them know it's not happening. It, it is no takeover. No takeover, but there was an invasion as Nas's response song, Ether, spread through the underground via New York mixtape king, K. Slay. Put Ether on the tape, and it just went... Wow. It was a spanking. People didn't expect that. No one expected Nas to come back. I am the truest. Name a rapper that I ain't influenced. After the ether, that said, New York was on Nas's back. People who were Jay-Z fans on Friday were Nas fans on Saturday. Nas's searing lyrics and raw delivery quickly caught the public's attention, turning the tables in this rapidly escalating feud. The hip-hop community was split. Fans and critics alike were drawn into the rivalry, picking sides and debating about who had the upper hand. Some praised Jay-Z's audacious approach and relentless lyrical assault, while others championed Nas's raw emotion and biting critiques. Radio stations were ablaze with these diss tracks, each play fueling the fire of the feud. Damn, I'm only worth over a hundred million. Look, I got beef with like a hundred children. Unfortunately, it wasn't up to par. Super ugly. <laughs> Jay Z said it was just a freestyle. It wasn't an answer to Ethan. So the last person in the world I'm gonna underestimate is Jay Z. You have to feel like the battle really isn't over. It doesn't seem like there's a finale there. This is hip hop in its purest form. Rap is a competitive sport. That's how we build it. And it's always gonna be a battle about who's the greatest. After the Ether, when the Ether hit that uh, it was the first time I seen Jay or just seen the, the crew up there looking vulnerable a little bit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Looking kind of uneasy, you know what I mean? Because they look so confident and strong all of the time, it was just awkward to see Dame uh, seem under pressure a little bit. You know what I'm saying? That was just weird. Like, he had a meeting with us one time, like, like yo, like, yo, man, yo, y'all hear what the fuck, y'all hear this shit, what's going on? Cause you know, Nas hitting him with this, Dame Diddy, Dame Daddy, a Dame Dummy, threw him all in there, so he's defected. And then he went in on Jay and all that. So Dame was like, yo, talking to us like in a huddle, with like, like, like football, like, yo, you gotta get this nigga, y'all. Fuck that. <laughs> he's like sick of niggas, like, yo, go load up. Run, go in on this nigga. Now another result from the back and forth between Nas and Jay-Z is that it shook things up a little bit. It added a breath of fresh air to what, for the first part of 2001, had been a fairly flat year for hip-hop. But what that meant is that the battle captured the attention of rap fans and hip-hoppers everywhere. The rivalry had spilled over from the recording studios and concert stages into the streets, with fans passionately defending their chosen side. This was more than a feud. It was a battle for the soul of hip-hop, a clash of titans that would define a generation. As the dust settled from these initial exchanges, it was clear that this was more than just a fleeting beef. This was a feud that would go down in hip-hop history, a rivalry that would shape the careers of both artists and leave an indelible mark on the genre. The battle lines were drawn, and the hip-hop community watched with bated breath as two of its titans clashed. <laughs> I think this is this may go down as one of the greatest battles of all time. I know kids coming to stores like this, juiced about verses that they've heard battling against who this guy battled this guy, and they come in fired up because these cats are battling. Two of the greatest rappers battle each other, mm -hmm. and people get excited of um, music like that. It's hot, man. That's what hip hop need. That you know what I mean. That that's one of, of the essence of of of, of rap. You know, the battle. Joe, we need some fun in this, man. Back in the days, you know what I mean? You had Kane doing it. You know what I mean? You had L doing it. That's how, how it all started. Different crews battling against each other. And that was kind of like the essence of it. Um, you know, who, who had the better skills, the better lyrics. Um, you know, who was the best crew. It's amusing. It makes people laugh. It sells records. So it's good in that sense. Martin Luther King said, talk it out. We just making it rap. We just making the lines run. And Nas is very creative and, and Jay is creative. But, you know, it all depends on 
when the battle is won, who's the last man standing. Uh -huh. And you know, right now, everybody's standing. When the dust settled, who stood victorious? That's the question on everyone's mind after the epic face-off between two titans of hip-hop. The aftermath of the feud between Nas and Jay-Z was as profound as it was polarizing, leaving an indelible mark on both their careers and the world of hip-hop. The rivalry, which had once threatened to tear the hip-hop community apart, was now a catalyst for creativity. On one hand, we had Nas, the poetic genius from Queensbridge, who was forced to evolve, to dig deep and bring forth some of his best work. His album Stillmatic, released in the wake of the feud, was hailed as a triumphant return to form, with critics and fans alike applauding his lyrical prowess and raw storytelling. On the other hand, we had Jay-Z, the savvy businessman from Brooklyn, who used the controversy to propel himself further into the limelight. His album The Blueprint became one of the greatest hip-hop albums of all time, transforming him from a respected artist into an international superstar. But the aftermath of the feud wasn't just about their music, it was about their image, their influence, and their legacy. Nas, ever the introspective artist, continued to captivate audiences with his thought-provoking lyrics and complex narratives. His work post-feud was seen as a testament to his resilience and artistic integrity, earning him a place among the greatest lyricists in hip-hop history. Jay-Z, on the other hand, leveraged the feud to expand his empire. He parlayed his success in music into a thriving business career, becoming one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the music industry. His post-feud career was marked by an unrelenting ambition and a knack for turning controversy into cash. But the question remains, who won the feud? The answer perhaps lies not in who sold more records or who had the last word, but in the enduring legacy they both left behind. The two of you coming together at this point is not just important for music, but it's, in my opinion, it's important for the streets and the people that you reach through your music. So this is a very important moment right here, you know, and at one point in the midst of your beef, I had a chance to speak to both of you individually. And I said, and Jay, you may recall, is there ever the possibility that you would ever work with the man sitting next to you. There wasn't collaborations before anything happened. So, you know, why would it happen after? So now the streets is watching, they're definitely talking. Why here and why now? It's bigger than both of us because it's not really about us. I mean, it is, but it really isn't. You know what I'm saying? It's more so about the, the culture and also about the ending and also about showing people another way. Because what we staged was something just stopped the world for a second. But it was always respect. It wasn't a point where, you know, he wanted to gun me down, I wanted to gun him down. It was never that, you know, because that's not how, I think, how real bosses move or how real men move. I'm a fan of rap, you know, and um, I don't have to front. Like a lot of artists today want to front and um, be as big as the biggest ones were. Like, they want to go from zero to 60. As soon as they start their career, they come out slandering people, acting, you know, crazy. And, and, and this is another another way for it to go. I mean, even in the mix of everything that we was going through as far as the battle, which was a battle, you know what I'm saying? You know, there was a, a, a deep respect there. I mean, to, to go at someone like that, you have to have respect for them or else you wouldn't care. You just brush it off like it ain't about nothing. And respecting the rap game at the level of Jay-Z and Nas means more than just talking the talk. It means you gotta walk the walk, which is what these two titans did in front of 20,000 fans at Jay-Z's I Declare War concert. This is for our culture, this is for hip-hop, we love y'all! What was originally meant to be a lyrical smackdown for Jigga's foes instead became a statement of unity. The moment you guys met on stage, at the I Declare War concert. Describe that feeling. What, what did you feel at that point? It was unreal, surreal. It was a second of like, you know, uh, are we seeing that? Then it was this pandemonium. It was crazy, it was chilling, and I felt like, wow, dang, this is that moment. And then, there may have been other times when I'm like, wow, I, I sold a lot of records on that album, or wow, I did, I made history right here, but it's like, dang, this, this, this moment right here, I never saw it coming. There was any reservation still, at that point it was all gone. Like, yeah, you know what, we are doing the right thing. I want to ask you guys now, you seem like you have a great rapport. You know, you guys seem like the energy is right. I'm feeling the energy in the room, you know, and, and the world has stopped once more because of Jay-Z and Nas. 
But what is the nature of your relationship now? Are you friends? Somebody asked me out the other day, I was like, this, you know, this isn't like high school. You know, you don't sit down with people and be like, you know, so so we friends now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just that's just that's just not a reality, you know? But anything that's that's shrouded in respect can grow. I mean, what was the first thing you guys said to each other? I don't know if you remember, but the first thing that happened is we gave a pal and busted out laughing. Yeah. Why? It's funny, because it's one of those things like at the time you would never think would happen in life, and it's happened. So it was, it was like it was funny. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, like look where we at right, right. here. While this new move is a positive thing for the hip hop community, it still has some people speculating. In an unconventional move, Nas distanced himself from his longtime label Columbia to join forces with Def Jam, where Jay Z is currently president. So, does that make Nas Jay's employee? Let me ask you this, because it, it puts you, you know, from hip hop or music in general, just the way the community is, it's all about appearances and perception. So, are you concerned with the appearance that Nas scored well in the battle, but he just signed to Jay? Jay wins the war. Not at all. Me coming over to Def Jam is, I bring, I'm bringing something to the table. I'm equivalent to 20 of these artists. You know, not Def Jam, Sony, or whatever. I'm just saying, wherever I go, and the bottom line is the movement is bigger than what someone says about Nas for the moment. I've always had someone say something about me. I'm one of the most crucified artists in the game, and when people have negative things to say, it's all good, man. And I think that they really, really, at the end of the day, respect the move, and they really do understand the move. Mm -hmm. Really do. We're thinking bigger than, you know, what was said on the record. We're thinking bigger than, you know, what people perceive this as, mm -hmm. you know? We're thinking as grown men, and we're also thinking as responsible grown men. We've been chosen as leaders. We have to lead. We can't follow what people's perception of this union is. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I didn't sign I didn't sign Nas. I partnered with Nas. I mean, you, you can't sign an a, a artist of Nas statue. Mm -hmm. You can only partner with him. The lines were drawn, and fans had to take sides. Jay. All I can say is Nas. Jay-Z. Nas really ripped it. I don't like Jay-Z. QB prevailed. Of course not. A lot of slurs thrown, a lot of horrible metaphors thrown back and forth at each other. And at one point, you even challenged Nas to a boxing match. That's light. That's gloves and headgear. You know what I'm saying? That could have been. That wouldn't have been nothing. That would have been nothing. You know, saying boxing was a clean way. I wasn't on the radio saying, you know, when I see him, it's on. Just, you know, ridiculous with it. But when you're in it, you're in it. And nothing gets in the way of a lyrical assassin with a score to settle. In 2001, Jay-Z gave hip-hop an uncut dose of verbal venom with the release of The Takeover. Debuting the track at a concert sponsored by New York radio station Hot 97, Jay took aim at Nas and his Queensbridge running mates, Mob Deep. That struck a chord in the Queens MC prompting Nas's planned retaliation at the same concert a year later, a performance which didn't happen for fear of elevating their mere battle to uncontrollable beef status. I had a big show put together. I was going to actually crucify Jay at our 97 show. When that battle was going down, when it took place, was there anything that he said that made you go, ooh, he hit me hard with that? Nah, because I was in it. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't viewing it from, from a statistical point of view. I was like, you know, I felt there was things that were said that was on, over the line that made me say things that was over the line. And since you infatuated with saying that gay yes, she was kissing my you was kissing that It's unsaid things, like, you know, where you from, where we grew up. Mm -hmm. And once you say certain things, you know, you cross the line. In 88, you was getting chased to your building, calling my crib, and I ain't even give you my numbers. When, when you heard the verse from the takeover, it, it didn't at all make you go, damn, Jay ain't playing, he's serious. Yeah, honestly, at first I was like, whatever. But the streets wasn't letting me let it go like that. Mm -hmm. So, and then I had to really pay attention. And when I did pay attention, I realized it was, it was really on. It seemed like that battle kind of, not you, not that you were asleep, but it kind of sparked you. Yo, I know you ain't talking about me, dog. You? What? Brought out the old nasty Nas. Oh, yeah. 
in the midst of a battle, you know, you don't, you never know how it's going to turn out because everything's at stake. So it was like, I thought it was personal. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, it was on. In The Takeover, you summarized Nas' career to one hot album in the 10-year average. And then you went on to imply that the knowledge he kicks is garbage. When the war is going on, all you're trying to do is you're trying to you're trying to point out things that is popular. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That you gonna get the most people. One line that I think, when everybody knew that Jay had the gloves off, was the line in uh, Takeover that, if I could paraphrase what he says. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say the line <laughs> yeah. that he said. <laughs> because you know who. I did, you know what, well, you know who. But we gonna leave that between me and you and just kind of left everybody hanging and it turned out that um, he was alluding to your, your your child's mother. How do you respond to that? Because no matter what you say, that's a hard line. Not very many people come back after that. The takeovers, that was like the figure four leg lock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you can't get out of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't escape that one. So it was a whole level of respect. Like, okay, the whole level of respect. And then I just lit a back. bomb. Put your soul like ether. Well, Teach you the king, you know you. Nah. God son across the belly. Lose. I prove you lost the race. <laughs> <laughs> Their rivalry, as bitter as it was, pushed them to new heights and paved the way for a new generation of artists. In the end, both artists continued to make their mark on the industry. But the question remains, who won the feud? Beyond the feud, what is the true legacy of Nas and Jay-Z? As we delve into the imprints left by these two hip-hop titans, it's clear that Nas and Jay-Z's legacy stretches far beyond their infamous rivalry. <laughs> so as the smoke clears on one of hip-hop's greatest feuds, fans and followers everywhere have one question. What caused the dramatic change of heart? I think there was a, a moment even when Jay was like on the radio and he was like, yo, you know, mom said chill. His mom was telling him it was like, and my mom, bless her, was listening. And I was like, wow, that's what I knew we both went too far. How does that make you guys look, though? If you make this big stance that we're coming together, forming a union, y'all saw what happened. You saw what happened with Biggie and Pac. They never got a chance to resolve their situation. Look what we're doing as Jay-Z and Nas. After Big and Pac left, I, there's a lot of MCs out there, but I really don't see many that really stand the test of time that, that are true warriors. And when we went to war, we killed everything out there. There was only me and him left on the battlefield. What else do these warriors do? Do they still fight it out to the end, or do they now come together? It's like saying Frazier and Ali, like, you know, things were said then, but, you know, it's in the spirit of competition. I, I for not one second could ever say I don't believe that he's one of the best lyricists ever. But you still got a lot of people, Nas, that want to get at you on the mic, that want to get at you on records, on wax, and probably will. They're going to make fun of y'all union. They're going to say, look at them now. They, they friendly, they're nice, they're hugged up. It's not that we hugging up and all that. We, we, we showed the world something for ourselves and for the fans. We did this for them. They can have that. Hang the post up, I'll sign it for you. Mm -hmm. But that's done. Now we're moving on. They got to they gotta let it go. Let it go. Let it go? Let it go. OK. <laughs> <laughs> With Jay and Nas off of each other's radar, it seems other MCs have set their sights on battling these two kings of rap. You and 50 have been at a war of words for the past however long, a year or so. And same now with you and Cameron. I've never really been in a word war mm -hmm. with 50. You know, 50 uh, came up with me. You know, like, I, had, I brought him on tours with me, and I like him a lot. I had a lot of love for him. And um, to tell you something real, I think what happened was he was hurt by me, by certain things he thought that I did were against him in certain ways that he didn't understand moves I was making. And his thing is, you know, he's going to say whatever's on his mind. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, he don't know when to stop. And I think he just got to get those things off his chest. But I never really had any word plan. Of course, I say a little things here and there. But you know what? At the end of the day, I know it was hurt. Say, for example, in your case, Jay, you got an interesting dilemma because now you wear a suit and you wear the hoodie. You know, and you got a former artist that's getting at you. The thing to me that got you to the position you are now was your credibility as an MC. But man, if you move as an MC, how does that affect your right. credibility as a CEO? Well, I don't think I don't think the record 
questions, I mean, or ever could question my credibility as an MC. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, it's not um, anything challenging enough or artistic enough. It's not even well thought out. So I don't think it challenges anything. I mean, it's just how I feel. If you listen to the song, if I say somebody looks like a camel, they look like a camel. If I say somebody has sandals on, they have on sandals. If you retaliate, so whatever, we'll be prepared. And if at some time, I feel like swinging back, like the narrow and heat, you know, cleaning that garbage up, you know, I might do that, you know what I'm saying? But it, it's nothing that deserves my immediate attention. Okay, well, that's what I, because you two are like the two deadly, um, deadliest MCs to have a battle. Okay, let's call it that. And I know it was in your heart, man. I know y'all hip hop. You want the record to... acts for it, man. Just okay. say that. Yeah, you got the record. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jay, give me the record. Is, you is, want it, right? The record is you want to hear it, right? So I want to know that you made it. <laughs> Did you make the record? No, no, I didn't make it. I ain't make it. You haven't made the record? Not yet. Not yet. But there's always a possibility. Yeah. But if someone comes out the Nas, y'all team now, you guys got to protect your investment. What does that mean? Does Jay come? To Nas's defense at some point? Does Nas come to Jay defense? Honestly, I don't really see any competition his way coming at him for me to come for his defense. I don't think he sees any competition my way. I don't, we haven't had one conversation. I haven't talked to you really about right. that. Maybe once or twice, little small things, but that's all it is. I haven't seen any real threats. I've only seen how this has threatened them. All beats aside, this is a business. And it'll be interesting to see how President Carter deals with an artist who's enjoyed more critical acclaim than commercial success. Your last two albums, Street Disciples and uh, God's Son, people will argue that, you know, it wasn't commercial enough. That's not necessarily good business for someone like you. Yeah, but so. don't turn me into just the guy with the suit, you know. I think we should double the chorus type of guy, okay? <laughs> don't turn me in that, I'm a creative guy. Let's not forget art can sell. You ain't got a, you ain't got a front all the time on your record. You, art can sell. He's proven that, I've proven that. Jay, let me ask you this, man, because you, you collaborated with big name artists in the past, um, namely R. Kelly, it didn't go too well, you know, in the end. Did you have any concerns with Nas at all? That's different. Like, we made an album together, me and R. Kelly. This is Nas's album. You know, it's his artistic um, direction and expression and where he sees himself going. I'm talking about, yeah. like, you ain't here. Yeah, like, put it like this. Like, I look at this because he's an MC. I would love for this man to be around while I'm making this and vice versa. We have an understanding of music which makes, makes our bond better when we're talking about creating and when we're talking about art. You know what I'm saying? So that's what the process is like, I feel. With the business of Nas and his album settled, the question remains, will Jay-Z, the MC, ever bless the mic again? It's been a lot of speculation that you're gonna come back with an S. Doc Carter album. What's that, cause that's not a Jay-Z album? Like, that, yeah. makes, that makes me a different person? Hey man, you, you know you're a tricky guy. You know, it ain't so no they say, so they say. <laughs> You know. Personally, I feel like, um, Jay, I feel like you gotta come back out. That's just me because, you know, if, if, if me and him don't do that, you gotta, we leave a lot of people out there that's like, what's going on? I'm curious to this too, because uh, we discussed this before when um, you were actually promoting the Linkin Park album that you did the possibility of you two doing an album together. At that time, you said no. Right. It looks like it's more of a possibility than ever right now. Is that possible that Nas and Jay would do an album together? Well, first things first. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. I ain't, I ain't ready for that one. Y'all want to breathe yeah, on that Let us walk, let us yeah. walk. They've both been instrumental in shaping the trajectory of hip hop each leaving an indelible mark on the genre in their own unique way. Nas, with his introspective lyricism and gritty storytelling, has been a guiding light for artists who seek to express their realities through rap. His debut album, Illmatic, is widely regarded as a seminal work in the genre. Nas's influence can be felt in the works of contemporary artists who weave complex narratives with their words, reflecting the realities of their lives and the world around them. Meanwhile, Jay-Z's legacy is one of entrepreneurship and expansion. From his humble beginnings in Brooklyn's Marcy Projects, Jay-Z has risen to become a cultural icon and a billion-dollar mogul. His journey has inspired countless artists to see beyond the confines of the music industry, 
to build their own empires and to control their narratives. Jay-Z's influence is evident not only in the music of today's top artists but also in their business endeavors. Their continued relevance in the music industry is a testament to their timeless appeal. Nas, the poetic prophet, continues to release music that resonates with listeners, his latest works echoing the same depth and introspection that marked his early career. Jay-Z, on the other hand, remains a prominent figure in the industry, his ventures extending into sports management, fashion, and streaming services, among others. Their rivalry may have been a defining chapter in their careers, but Nas and Jay-Z are more than just adversaries. They are pioneers, trailblazers who've used their platforms to push the boundaries of what hip-hop can be. They've shown the world that hip-hop is not just a genre, but a culture, a movement, a way of life. Regardless of who you believe won the feud, there's no denying that both Nas and Jay-Z have left an indelible mark on the world of hip-hop.